Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be taking a look back at 10 amazing developers in the gaming industry that were unfortunately offed by their publishers. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be taking a look at game developers that were shut down by their publishers and parent companies. To qualify, the organization must have had all of its internal development shut down. Companies that were merged but had their main branch closed or just ceased development of all their respective games are applicable. Number 10. Runic Games One of the more recent devs to be axed, Runic Games is well known for their Torchlight series, bringing together major talent from ex-Blizzard developers. The Torchlight series started as an homage to Diablo, before gaining enough ground to become a separate entity with Torchlight 2. Runic's last game before closure was Hob, and while it didn't sell as well as their flagship series, it wasn't the reason for their closure. Like many publishers today, Perfect World Entertainment closed down Runic Games in order to sell games as a service, aka monetization and microtransactions. Aren't you happy? Number 9. Core Design While Crystal Dynamics has certainly helped to reinvent the Tomb Raider series, we can't forget the classics. Core Design started out making small, mediocre titles before finding success in the Tomb Raider franchise. Unfortunately, after the poor sales and critical reception of Angel of Darkness, Core Design's fate was basically sealed. Working on only one other title, the studio saw ownership shifted to Rebellion Developments, where it remained for five years without a single game developed, before eventually being completely shut down. You are ready. Number 8. Mythic Entertainment A journey to the distant shores of Avalon. A vast world awaits. Going back to the late 90s and early 2000s, multiplayer games were starting to rise up in the industry, especially MMOs. Considered to be one of the granddaddies of MMOs, Mythic's long list of contributions to the genre helped to shape many titles we play today, from their first game, Dragon's Gate, to the massive hit that was Dark Age of Camelot. Mythic basically had it made. Despite releasing well-received MMOs, the studio was wound down by EA over time, until their final game was the infamous Dungeon Keeper reboot. Ugh. <laughs> Number 7. Bullfrog Productions The creators behind the original Dungeon Keeper, Bullfrog Productions was praised for their strategy and god simulator games. Spearheaded by none other than Peter Molyneux, the studio is considered to be the founder of the god game genre, with games that gave players near unlimited power and control over the environment and its denizens. Working with EA during their early years, they became a subsidiary in 1993, officially making games exclusively for EA. Ah, if only they knew what was coming. While the studio grew, so did EA's list of desired games, and the quality soon fell. Electronic Arts slowly began to merge the studio with EA UK, until finally closing it down in 2001. Number 6. Pandemic Studios Pandemic Studios knew how to make fun games that offered hours of entertainment, and without progression systems to boot. The creators behind the original Star Wars Battlefront series, they are still hailed as the creators of one of the ultimate Star Wars gaming experiences. Beyond their Star Wars games, though, fans of the studio will also recognize fun titles like the Destroy All Humans and Mercenary series. Bought by EA in 2007, they only lasted two more years before being terminated. The few games they did work on under EA received poor sales, and while they were indeed inventive, poor sales are never something you want to have when you're working under electronic arts. There is no turning back now. May he find peace in the next world. Number 5. Lionhead Studios we did our jobs. Think of me, Taking his creative ideas elsewhere after his time at Bullfrog, Peter Molyneux started up another studio. While they first began with spiritual successors to Populous, it was the European fantasy Fable series that brought Lionhead Studios to the forefront. Finding a publisher in Microsoft Game Studios, Lionhead's Fable series continued to grow, despite Peter's habit of promising features he couldn't deliver. After four years since a proper Fable title, Lionhead showed off Fable Legends with unique and interesting features that had never been seen before. Unfortunately, Fable Legends just couldn't seem to find the same audience as his last one. The game was cancelled, and the studio shut down by Microsoft. The villain. 
Number four, Maxis, Emeryville Studio. Uh, it might end up being better the more cities you have in an actual region, but it seems to be completely possible to make a lucrative casino town um, just as your first city. If a silly simulation of life is what you were looking for, then Maxis was your studio. Creators of the renowned Sims and Sim City series, Maxis was considered a pro at creating games where you could escape the humdrum daily life in favor of one with more direct control, something that Maxis founder Will Wright seemed to lack the more time his company spent with EA. The last nail in the coffin came from the reboot of Sim City and the mediocre launch of Sims 4 in 2015. Soon after, Maxis's main studio closed, taking all other studios and putting them on various projects while merging them with other EA subsidiaries. Number three, Westwood Studios. Acknowledged. Real-time strategy games weren't anything new at the time of Westwood Studios' flagship Command & Conquer series, but that didn't stop them from helping to bring the genre into a brighter spotlight. Before even that series took off, though, Westwood would shape the landscape of RTS games to come with their Dune series, especially Dune 2, with developers and critics citing the titles as the true beginning of an era for RTS games. Despite their legendary status in the RTS market, the last Command & Conquer game did not impress audiences or the sales team at EA, essentially signing the studio's death warrant. I'm not risking any more pilots. We have a GPS lock on the Nod installation. Prepare for ion cannon strike. Number two, Visceral Games. I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. Oh boy, the boys at Electronic Arts sure have a track record, eh? Visceral Games was unfortunately the latest in EA's long line of closed studios. Known first as EA Redwood, it was when Dead Space came into play that they rebranded as Visceral. Critics and audiences praised the first two entries for creating a successful action horror game. Unfortunately, with the publisher's meddling hands in Dead Space 3, Visceral began to wind down, becoming another subsidiary that worked on other people's series. Given the chance to make a Star Wars game, they went with a linear, story-driven experience. And to basically no one's surprise, EA butted heads with them until they ultimately decided to shut down both the project and Visceral Games itself. Number one, LucasArts. Let's see how you feel about that after you get a thousand levels down. Adapting one of the greatest sci-fi movies into video games is only one of the many accomplishments of LucasArts. Acting as both a developer and publisher, LucasArts also worked on many adventure games, including the Monkey Island series and Sam and Max Hit the Road. Their contribution to both adventure games and the Star Wars series is legendary. Rather, was legendary. After being acquired by Disney, all current games, like Star Wars 1313, under the LucasArts brand, were cancelled, and the rights handed over to you guessed it, Electronic Arts. Given that studio's handling of the Star Wars Battlefront series as of late, this does not bode well for the future of the Star Wars franchise. LucasArts might not actually be officially closed, but they are nothing but a shell of their former selves. At least I learned something from all this. What's that? How to deal with frustration, disappointment, and irritating cynicism. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.